Is it possible to reinvent your life after the age of 50? Okay, ladies, I thought we would touch on the topic that I'm going to share a little bit of my personal experience because when I turned 50, a lot of things changed in my life because I knew that there was a new chapter ready to be written after I saw that two of my sons were at university and my youngest was still in high school. But it was really a time of reflection and a time of when I was thinking, okay, I've stayed home for 26 years, you know, what's next? What's next for me? And I know that many of you, maybe you're feeling like you're in a rut or maybe you're longing for a change in direction after hitting a milestone of 50, because that's really what happened to me, as I said. And I just wanted you to know you're not alone. But one of the things that I do know when we embrace change, no matter what age we are, it truly helps our mental disposition. It truly enhances our relationships and it gives us increased confidence. And all of those things happen when I dramatically change direction when I turn 50, because we are never too old to embrace a world of possibilities. And they're definitely waiting for you, especially if you do feel as if you're in a rut. So I don't want you to be afraid to take the leap, to jump in the deep end, to learn a new skill, to change direction in your life. Maybe you've had a, a loss. I, I lost my husband five years ago. Maybe you're dealing with that. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's a loss of a job. There's just so many things that are going to happen to us. And we all know this as we age, many, many things change and we also need to embrace change. So that's what this video is just all about today. And as I said, I'm going to uh, share my own personal experience, but I did just want to touch on just a couple of things because reinventing yourself after 50 brings about physical benefits and can significantly improve your mental health. And that's really what I noticed when I started writing this new chapter in my life, because I am out there learning something new every day, taking chances, taking risks, and that's good for my mind. It's really good to have challenges in front of me and to be able to step into uh, or step out of my comfort zone. As I said, you want to, sometimes you just kind of have to jump in the deep end and start swimming because you're going to be the one that's going to benefit from it. And you're the one that's going to, um, as far as mentally, your mental capacity is going to improve or expand. You're also going to feel more confident. And that's what the channel is all about. Style at a certain age is always about aging with grace, strength, and beauty. And I picked those three words very specifically and thoughtfully because grace is we need to give ourselves grace sometimes to change, to go in a new direction, to embrace life and not think that we've been, you know, put into a corner or that we turn into dust. And it's very important, you know, if we, if we have these mindsets to be able to break out of them because they're negative thoughts and patterns and they don't do any good. They don't serve us well at all. So I just want to encourage everybody when we do step outside of our comfort zone, we do want to embrace self-improvement. We are creating a solid foundation for a healthy and vibrant life. And that's what it's all about at any age. So you may be 50, 60, 70, 80. I'm a firm believer that as long as we are here on this earth, we have something to do, something to share. It's very, very important to just embrace all of those things. Today, I'm thrilled to partner with One Skin again because it's important to shift our skincare routine with the seasons, right? I know we just had a very long, dry winter and now we're going into spring. And so that's just perfect time to switch gears because things like dry, flaky skin, redness, even fine lines and wrinkles are a reflection of what's happening at the cellular level. So give your skin the TLC it needs to stay healthy, smooth and hydrated as we move into warmer weather. And for a limited time, my viewers will get an exclusive 15% off One Skin products using the code Beth when you check out at oneskin.co and we'll have everything linked down below. Because no matter the season, keeping your skin looking and feeling healthy with One Skin 
is top of mind. And honestly, it has a Saka stamp of approval. And that's why I've been sharing them with you month after month. And here's a fun fact. In a third party 12 week clinical study performed by a third party research organization, OS1 face was clinically proven to strengthen the skin barrier, improve skin health markers, and diminish visible signs of aging. And wrinkles were diminished in 87% of users. That's pretty impressive. So check the description box down below to get 15% off one skin with the code Beth at www.oneskin.co. But our mental health is definitely going to improve when we are out there learning new skills, when, we're, when we've uh, embraced new passions and interests. And it's also going to help our social life too. And I am a firm believer that we need community. We need family and we need friends and we need community because we are social beings, we're social creatures and we need each other. And those interactions with our friends and family and even acquaintances truly make us better people. It's also important to stay vibrant and our conversations to be vibrant. It's also important that we embrace creative opportunities because that is going to strengthen bonds with other people. And when we prioritize personal growth and self-discovery, we're not only benefiting ourselves, but we're also sharing our gifts, our skills with other people. And that's also important too. As I said, we need to be the best versions of ourselves. And so I'm just gonna share my own little experience because it all started back when I was turning 50 and I was going to be celebrating my 25th wedding anniversary. So I had two major milestones coming my way. And I was living in Shanghai, China at the time because my husband's career had taken us overseas for many years. And as I said, I had two of my sons were at university. My youngest was still in high school, but I knew that there was a new chapter for me to write. So, but I also was a little paralyzed because I immediately thought about, okay, I'd love to go back to work, but I haven't had a job other than being a wife and a mom for 26 years. And who's going to hire me? Because one thing I knew is that corporate America does not value or give you any credit for staying home and raising three responsible young men who are out there paying taxes and being a positive force in society. But honestly, that doesn't do you any good. And I also really struggled with the fact that, gosh, you know, because of that, what was I going to do? Did I have to go back to school? I didn't really want to do that. Do I have to, I mean, you know, how do you pump up your resume to get a job with a 26 year absence? And I used to, honestly, I wasn't quite doing this, but I really felt like I was just like on the kitchen floor, just paralyzed and thinking that I had to make a decision. And my late husband, Mac, just used to howl with laughter because he's like, you're going to be fine. You're smart, you're talented, you're capable, you're going to figure it out. But it's one thing when somebody's telling that to you and it's another for you to embrace that. But through a series of events and, and one was, I was in a Mahjong group in Shanghai and one Friday, we only had three of us that showed up to Mahjong and you need four to play. And actually go research Mahjong because it's a really very fun game. But since there were only three of us, we just sat around drinking wine and just chatting, but I left that Mahjong group that day, a light bulb had been turned on because I was like, I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to write a book. So I knew that that's what I was going to be doing like for the rest of my life. And I really, you know, I knew it. You know how you know, you know, you know. That's exactly how I felt when I left that Mahjong group. But not knowing anything about writing a book it took me a couple of years. And, uh, and I had a little checklist of, you know, all the things that I needed to do to, to write the book. Lo and behold, it's uh, 2012 and I finished my first book. I actually snagged an agent from New York. And one of the first things that he did when we had our first meeting, he just sat me down and he said, Beth, everything has changed in social media since the 2008 crash and the publishing houses have zero budget to promote new authors. So you are going to have to take that task on yourself. And I was just like, are you kidding me? I just went through this whole checklist of how to write a book. Now I have to figure out how to market myself. 
And he also impressed on me that I needed a social media presence, which at that time, I just looked at him and I'm like, what's that? And Facebook and Twitter were the two big social media apps at the time. And he told me, he's like, well, you need to have a, a Facebook presence. And also in 2012, that's when my, my kiddos were young and they were all on Facebook. Now nobody's over there, but they were like, no, mother, you cannot be on Facebook. That's, you know, that, that was their territory. So I told Eric, I'm like, because I had a, I had a Facebook account, but I had five friends because I really didn't go over there. I was respectful of my, my children's wishes. And I just looked at him and I said, I think I have five Facebook friends. And his advice was to go find some more. So that just really, you know, kept churning in my mind, social media presence, Facebook, what am I going to talk about? Because I knew I needed to speak authentically to whatever topic it was that I was going to share with the world. I mean, nobody was interested in how to write a book or now my new checklist of marketing that book. Nobody was interested in that. So to make a long story short, so that book did not get picked up and I didn't have to worry about a social media presence. My late husband and I had moved to San Francisco at this time. I'm almost finished with my second book and I knew that this was the one, this book was good and this one was going to get picked up. So I was also thinking about social media again and what I was going to talk about. And I was working at Bloomingdale's in San Francisco. I was the Ralph Lauren specialist in the home department. So I was very, you know, so retail was, you know, part of my life at this point. And I was very conscious of 20 somethings posting an outfit of the day. And I, you know, the light bulb went on again. I was like, that's it. It was just like writing the book. It's like, that's it. I can speak authentically to posting an outfit of the day because everybody always loves my outfits. Women are always asking me where I bought this or where, where I bought that, or if I were a stylist. So my late husband immediately volunteered to take my photos. And I have to say, we were not very good at the beginning, but we were consistent. And we would go out on the beautiful streets of San Francisco and, you know, half of the photos were corrupt because there's a trash can behind me or my feet were cut off or, I mean, X, Y, and Z. And, and uh, actually our children were always trying to gracefully give us some um, coaching on, on how to be better. But honestly, nobody was really paying attention to me at that time. So it gave us some time to really develop and get better. And if you've made it this far in the video, you might as well hit the subscription box down below and the notification bell. There are three things you can do to help me grow the channel, like, share, and comment. But one thing that really just struck me was we just jumped in and we just started swimming. We had no idea what we were doing. And actually this was for my book um, because I was just about ready to finish it and give it to my agent and have that marketed. and. That's when everything just really took off with the blog. And I can remember one of my kiddos sat down with me and he's like, because I was getting to the point where I'm, you know, working retail. Now I'm taking photos, posting it, you know, social media now is taking over more of my life and I need to finish the book. So I have a lot of things competing and I was starting to get frustrated with my social media presence because it was taking up way too much time in my mind. And I was really thinking of just, you know, kind of putting it uh, off to the side. And then that's when one of my children sat me down and really said, Mom, did you ever think that this is what you're supposed to be doing now? You know, posting the outfits of the day and you can always finish your book. And I can remember looking at him and thinking, when did you get so wise? But I'm so glad that I took his advice because nine years later so i was 56 when all of this blew up and i had no idea that you could turn this into a business i had i mean influencing bloggers i mean whatever you want to call us digital content creators it was really in its infancy it's still a very young industry but definitely in, a, in its infancy back then and as i said i had no idea you could monetize it or turn it into a business or work with brands or earn money off of affiliate links or even start a YouTube channel. So these are all the things that I learned all along the way because I wasn't afraid to take a chance. 
I wasn't afraid to learn something new and I wasn't afraid to fail because sometimes what holds us back from writing a new chapter in our life or whether you want to say we're reinventing ourselves, I don't think I've really reinvented myself because I'm really the same person. I just feel like I've written a new chapter in my life and, and continue to write that new chapter, but don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to take on a new challenge. Don't be afraid to go, you know, travel by yourself. Maybe go learn a language. Maybe it is um, uh, a volunteer opportunity in another country. There are so many opportunities out there for us. I'm just sharing mine and mine just happened to be something that turned into a viable business and something that I truly, truly love. But. I just think it's really important to encourage all of us out there. You know, so whether we're 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, we are never too old to learn something new. It is never too late. And we need to start embracing all the beautiful, wonderful things that can come into our lives because we're keeping ourselves open and we're keeping ourselves flexible and we're wanting to write that new chapter. So I just wanted to share today how I changed or started to change my life. At, it was really 50, but then 56 when I started blogging. I think I was 58 when I, uh, no, actually I was close to 60 when I started the YouTube channel. And recently I just started a podcast with two of my daughters-in-law, Chelsea and Kelly, and it's called Message from Mom, and we'll link everything down below. And it's where we are just having an open and honest conversation. We're busting the myth that mothers-in-law aren't necessarily monsters-in-law. But again, it's a new chapter, and it's something that's keeping me active and viable and also involved with my community, which two of them happen to be my daughters-in-law. So I'm just gonna encourage you today and leave a comment down below on something that you want to learn, something that you want to accomplish, something, I mean, I love to hear like, oh, I, you know, I took on the head nursing position at the hospital, I didn't wanna do it, it was gonna be a lot of work, but I did it. Or I have a dear friend of mine that went back to graduate school 15 years ago and didn't think that she was gonna survive, you know, all of that pressure. Or like me, where you just, you know, kind of, accidentally uh, fell into a job that you didn't even know existed, but you had to learn things along the way. So drop those down in the comments. And again, I'm gonna encourage you, it's never too late and you're never too old and we don't turn to dust. And a big thank you to OneSkin for this sponsored video. And thank you, my lovely subscribers, for supporting the brands allow me to bring you fresh ideas. Okay, ladies, I hope maybe this sparked a little bit of interest for you to try something new, to understand that it's never too late, to know that we are still vibrant beings after the age of 50, 60, 70, 80. Of course, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.